afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and a few things I wanted to cover here with you. Um, on Israel's N-12, they admitted Israelis killing their own people on October the 7th. The article uh, title here, A Lot of Bilateral Shooting and an irregularity in the distribution of forces. New revelations about the October and 7th investigation says the IDF began to investigate the battles in the first days in the surrounding settlements, and the picture is becoming clearer. Many casualties due to our forces firing on our forces and the decision that was made in real time which turned out to be wrong. The IDF is investigating an acting commander of the Gaza Division will be appointed until the completion of the investigation in the case of Brigadier General uh, Hiram, who is expected to enter to position. Uh, I'd be really curious. I haven't followed up on the rest of that story there, but that in itself uh, is not surprising. Then I saw this particular footage here. Notice what it says right here. Statistic crime inciting uh, this morning in Janine. Not only do the occupying forces invade territory that is not theirs, shoot, abuse, and destroy, they also use the wounded as human shield. Faith, flagrant violation of international law and war crime according to the Rome, uh, Rome, uh, uh, Geneva Convention. What will save you from the Hague? It's nothing. Uh, pay close attention here to this video right here. The man on this Jeep right here, he is wounded. Uh, you'll see him move a little bit as they're moving forward. But they strap him to the hood of the vehicle as if he's some kind of prize. Uh, but according to the, uh, it's actually in Hebrew there, the comment there is that they did that to keep from people from attacking them. The man lifted his head up on there, if you'll notice there in the beginning. Watch closely there. So he lifted his head and laid it back down. He's strapped to the vehicle so he can't move. And they're just taking him out of there, hoping nobody strikes the vehicle as they leave the Janine region there in the West Bank. Uh, what a horrible horrible crime that is. Uh, very, very sad to see something like that. Uh, also, two strike hits a tent camp near ICRC office in Gaza, killing 22, and uh, aid group says the strike in Mawasi, north of Rafa, was dangerously close to humanitarian structures and damaged the ICRC's office, humanitarian group said there. There's been Gosh, I forget how many. What is it now? The uh, death toll, I believe it's around 40,000 have been killed in Gaza since this war started. Can you imagine that? Nearly 40,000 people have lost their lives. And really, Gaza is nothing but like the equivalency of two or three cities put together as one. I, I mean, it's just beyond anything that I could ever even imagine. Um, this is something I thought was interesting, too. Abby Martin is talking about the number of Israelis that support the war in Gaza. And I, I actually, I personally believe her numbers are a little inflated here, but listen into a little bit about what she says. Uh, it is still interesting, nonetheless. To diminishing left in Israel. I mean, just look at the genocidal onslaught. Look at the polling. Less than 2%, less than 2% thought that Israel was using too much firepower in Gaza after they obliterated and decimated the entire Gaza Strip. Less than 2%. You go back to the 2014 onslaught in Gaza where 2,500 Palestinians were killed, 500 children, 95% of Israelis supported that. The open fire policy at this fortified border fence, overwhelming majority, over 90% of Israelis support that. There were some Israeli human rights advocates that tried to take that policy to the Knesset, and it was overwhelmingly, unanimously upheld that no. Mm. It's still very sad to hear these types of numbers, but I think one of the biggest reasons why you don't hear more numbers uh, condemning what's happened in Gaza is because the people know that they will be attacked by other Israelis if they dare speak up.
So there's fear. And so I think, Abby, on that regard there, it's something you may not realize, but the fear of speaking out has a lot of people silenced as a result on that there. Uh, this I found interesting as well. Uh, I think Ch yeah, Charles uh, sent this to me here, Charles Hodge. Check him out on Twitter there. David Saltzman and a member of Chabad Lubavitch Synagogue in Brooklyn, New York, where underground tunnels were discovered earlier this year, admitted in a, on a podcast that rituals are being performed underground. Rituals, what they believe, to resurrect the Messiah. Listen into some of this very... <clears throat> very disturbing at all and very too troubling long. there was one well. more viral image going around and this is the one everyone's been talking about is this dirk just pulled up on screen stained mattress that was pulled out of the tunnel being carried by members of the synagogue so there's a lot of crazy conspiracy theories i don't want to go down any tasteless rabbit holes but david if you could Explain why was there a mattress in the tunnels and what is the oh. stain? A lot of folks are wondering, is this stain feces? No, no, it's not feces. What the is stain it? is blood and basically oh, we, right, do, well. we did rituals. I said that before. There were some rituals that, that we, uh, go, we do in the tunnels. And sometimes the rituals might involve uh, uh, someone who recently died. We'll bring him down there. And we're trying to do a ritual to bring back the, the Messiah, which is a Schneerson, if you heard about him on the news. So he died no. many years ago, but uh, we have rituals that uh, we believe we can bring him back. And so, uh, so how do these rituals was work? that the main guy who was sort of instructing on the tunnels? Well, that was a long time. He's the he's like the head he's the head rabbi, and he's right. the guy that uh, uh, we uh, look for for direction. Mm. Right, and the news was saying that he is potentially not passed on. Right, that's right. So we don't know that, so we try to do rituals to try to, to bring, him bring him back. back. Correct. There you go. Rituals. Pretty weird, to say the least. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got a teaching I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And also, don't forget, if you are part of our LifeWave group and you are planning on trying to make the trip to Atlanta, that's on Tuesday, the 25th of this month. Please email us. Let us know you're coming. It's very important because we want to be able to meet you there. Um, is we're not speaking at this event. It's just a LifeWave event. It'll be at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday evening, and I'll put the details in the description of the uh, video here below. Uh, but it is at the Hilton Hotel, and I'll have to explain in the description below where that's at. But email us at benoonx 39 at gmail.com. And a lot of times you can't put an email in um, in the description. I have to put Benoon X39, and then skip a space, and then put the word Gmail. So you have to fill in the blanks there at gmail.com. Okay, so because for some reason YouTube doesn't allow that to come up in there. So definitely, if you want to be able to, please email us. Let us know you're coming because we'd love to be able to see you there, and we think it'll be very beneficial for you. God bless you and thank you for listening.